Hi everyone, I'm JC and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create this composition using nested adboard. We will see how to make this simple animation, the rig, and finally how to make the composition. So, let's see how we can do this. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is the design. It's like a flower, it's very simple. I use ellipse for all this part, for the light, for this part of the flower, and for these two glows. The stem, the stem is a stroke, and as you can see here, I use two different gradients, two different colors for this part. The first color is the color of the stem, and the second, I use this to create this light effect around to the stem. And for that, I use a different gradient, and the thickness is a little bigger than this. Now. My idea is to uh, create a simple animation in this part of the flower. And for that, I have separated the flower into adpor. So, let's start with this animation. The idea is to create a simple scale animation. It's something like when I scale this part of the flower, what I want is that these two glow scale, but they scale twice. And for that, I'm going to use the scale constraint. So, the first thing I'm going to do is select these two shapes and group them. And I'm going to rename this body. Now, change the style of the group to target and use this target like a control. Okay, for the glow, I'm going to add the scale constraint. And here in the properties, select like a target, this control. And now you can see what happened here. The size of the glow changed. And this is because the size of the control, which is 100%, is different to the size of the glow. To fix this, I'm going to remove this constraint and group this glow. Now I'm going to rename this glow one and add the constraint to this group. Here, scale constraint and here in the properties, select like a target, this control. And now you can see how the glow keep the size. And when we scale the control, the glow is scale two. But what we want is that this glow is scaled twice. So select the glow and in the properties of the constraint, change the strength, the strength to 200%. Now, when you select the control and scale, oops, something is wrong here. Let me check the glow properties and the target. Okay. Select the target. And now when you select the control and the scale, you can see how the glow is scaled twice. Okay, for the other glow, the same. Group this, rename glow2, and add the scale constraint. And here in the properties, I'm going to change for the strange I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use a 400% and select the target that is the control. And now when I select the control and scale, you can see what happened here. What is the effect of this? Okay, so to animate this, I'm going to animate mode. And here I'm going to do something uh, simple. So, the first thing I need to do is change the time to 2 seconds. And here, for the first moment, keep the actual size. So, keep here. And now, in one second, I'm going to scale this a little, not too much. And for the last, copy this key and paste here. And don't forget to select all the keys and add a qubit interpolation. And make sure that you have the loops selected. 
So when you play, you can see the animation is working. Okay, I'm going to rename this scale animation. And now the next thing I need to do is add this animation here, this add board here. And for that, I'm going to use the nested add board option. So the first thing I need to do is select this add board and using this nested add board, I'm going to click here. And now in the inspector, I can select what ad board I want. In this case, what I need is the uh, glow ad board. So select the glow and move in the position I want. Here is here. Now select the animation, in this case, the scale animation. And in the properties, check the plugin option. Now, when you go to animate mode, make sure that the loop is activated and hit play. And you can see that the animation is working in this ad bar. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can create the rig for this flower. So let's see how we can do this. The idea of this rig is that let me move the flower from one side to other by deforming the stamp. And for that, we need two things, bonds and a control. Let's start with the bonds. With the B key, I'm going to create some bond for the stem and for these parts. Now, make sure that the bond is in the right position. And now the next thing we need is bind the stem to the bonds. And for that, select the path of the stem. And here in the inspector, you have the bind options by bond options. So click here to add a new bond. And here you can see how it's difficult to select the bond because the stroke is in the middle of the bond. So. One trick for this is use command and option and hit option again. And now you can select the bone. For the next, add a new bone and the same command, option and hit option again. And for the last, add a new bone and only you need command and option and select the bone. Now we have the three bonds selected. The next thing we need is weight the vertex of the stem. And for that, what I need is uh, go to a vertex mode. So with the pack selected, hit enter. And now you can see that uh, we have two vertex for this stem, but I need a new vertex here. So with the P key, I'm going to add a new vertex and change the type to mirror and increase the length. Now that we have all the vertex we need, I'm going to weight each vertex. For this, for example, that is in this position with the blue bond, I'm going to make sure that this value is 100% for the blue bond. For this vertex, uh, the vertex and this handless, because it's between these two bonds, I'm going to change this to 50, 50%. 50 and for the last, because it's in this position with the red bond, I'm going to change this value to 100% for the red bond. Now, when I move this, you can see how the stem is deforming by the bonds. So now the idea is in the animation, I'm going to move this bone here, this move here, and this here. 
but I don't wa I don't want to do this moving each bone. I want to do this using only one control. It's something like when you select all the bones. Oops, select this and this up and this and use the uh, rotation in this vector. You can see how you can move all the bonds in the same time. And this is what you want, one control to move all the bonds in the same time. And for that, what you need is a new control. So with the G key, I'm going to create a new group and change the style to target and use this target like a control. So I'm going to move this in the position I want it's here. And now to make this bone follow the control, I'm going to use the uh, rotation constraint. And here in the properties, use uh, like a target, this control. Oops, here. And now you can see what happens. The rotation of the bone change. And this is because the rotation of the bone that is negative 19 is different to the rotation of the control. So to fix this, I'm going to remove this constraint and change the rotation of the control to negative 90, like the bone. Now select this bone, add the rotation constraint and select the target. And when you move this control, the bone moves too. But my idea here is that when I move the control, I want that this bone move only a little. And for that, I'm going to change the strength to uh, 20%. So now, when I move this control, the bone only moves 20%. And this is the idea of this rig. For the next bond, I'm going to move a little more, and for the next, a little more. So, select the second bond, add the rotation constraint, and now change the strength to, uh, if I use here 20%, this can be 60%. And select the target. And for the last bond, Add the rotation constraint. And here I'm going to keep this 100% and select the target. Now, when you move the control, all the bones move deforming the stem. And this is because this bone moves 20%, this bone moves 60% and this bond moves 100%. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is uh, connect this part of the flower to this bond. And for that, I'm going to move this here, and that's it. Now, when I move the control, the flower moves to one side to other, by deforming the stem. Okay, to animate this, go to animate mode. And here I'm going to change the time to two seconds. And uh, for uh, this first moment, I'm going to move the uh, flower using the control, I'm going to move the flower something like this here. And in one second, I'm going to move a little more here. And now for the last key, copy this key and paste here, select all the keys and add the qubit interpolation. Make sure you have the loop activate and hit play. 
and this is the final animation. The last thing I'm going to show you is how you can create a composition of flower here using the animation we did. And for that, I'm going to select this ad board and using the nested ad board option, I'm going to click here and in the inspector, select the ad board. This is flower and add the animation we need that is a flower animation and make sure you check the playing option in the properties. Now, if you go to animate mode and hit play, you can see that this animation is working in this ad board. Okay, to have a better control with this ad board, I'm going to group it and change the style of the group to target to use this uh, target like a control. So I'm going to move this here and this here. And now select the ad board and lock it. This way I have this control to move or scale the flower to make the composition. Now, move the flower to the left part of the ad board. And to make more easy, I'm going to change the pose of the flower. And for that, I'm going to use the ad board of the flower and move the control here. Now, to make uh, the composition of this part, I'm going to uh, select the flower and duplicate. Move and scale to create this uh, composition in this part, in the left part of that bar. Move here, scale a little, move, duplicate and move here, maybe here. When you finish with the left part, you can duplicate one of the flower and change the scale from X to negative. And now use this flower for the right part. And to scale and move here and duplicate, move, change the scale, move. Now, when you finish the composition, if you go to animate mode, if you hit play, you can see that all the flowers are moving, but they move at the same time. To change this, you can select each ad board and change here in the properties the speed of the ad board. For example, here, you're going to add 0.5. The next ad bar, I'm going to add 0.7. Okay. And the next, I'm going to open the properties and here, 0.3. Now, when you finish, if you go to animate mode, you can see how all the flowers are moving at different times. So that's it. This is all about this tutorial. Now, you know how to create a composition using the same animation in Rive. So I really want to see how you can do with this. And that's it. I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any question, please leave the comment on the video. Have fun and see you in the next tutorial.